Hey guys, welcome to the final set, the ace match between Harvard and Princeton University. <laughs> an ace match. Yes, yes. Upper right hand corner we have DSH or Dish as the orange Zerg. Bottom left hand corner we have Spencer as the white Protoss. This is going to be on Blue Storm, which is a fun Zerg versus Protoss map. I think it's very Zerg favored though. For several reasons. First of all, you've got this little gap where Zerglings can fit through and Dragoons cannot. Uh, Hydralisks, I believe, can go through there. So basically, small units can fit through this gap. Dragoons and larger units have to go the long way around, which is this direction. Then you have that secondary, and also over that secondary, you can see very harassable by Mutalisks. So pretty standard for Zerg to go either 9 pool or 12 pool to open, get some speed Zerglings, run out in the field, kill that uh, early probe scout. Um, I feel like Protoss are obligated to go fast expansion because it's such a wide secondary. There's no ramp to really block off anything with Zealots. So you really need a cannon in the back of your base with uh, to just make sure the Zerglings stay back or up on that front door. But a pylon on the off position. Interesting. So going to stick to one base. Oddly for Spencer, let's see how this plays off for him. I can't imagine he would go two gate. If he does go two gate, it would be very difficult to execute. Because again, um, I, I'm expecting either a 12 pool or a 9 pool on the opposite end, or an over pool. I guess there's an overlord being built right here. Um, but yeah, that that's going to be very difficult to defend for Spencer, because Spencer's going to have to worry about counterattacking Zerglings uh, into his main, particularly if there's that speed alongside. So putting down that gateway, now going to scout. I'm not sure if Dish randomed or not, because that could definitely be a factor into this game. Keep in mind, a lot of pressure on these guys, because whoever wins this game advances. Uh, so everything on the line for their respective teams. That drone scout now wandering in, seeing that gateway. And I've got to assume, if he wasn't going 12th pool before, he's definitely going now. So there's the uh, drones coming. Um, yeah, to my own <laughs> stupid drones. No, go mine! Go mine! Um, spawning pool being placed. No gas being added on. Now they're starting to mine just yet. Uh, I expect to see gas, and he needs to conserve larva at this stage to have zerglings out to deal against. Yeah! Looks like it is going to be, in fact, a two-gate rush. First zealot should be being produced right there. Second pylon uh, should have uh, should be being placed uh, slightly after. Looks like that drone managing to escape with its life barely. Um, pylon coming a little bit late. Uh, actually, I expect, usually you'll see the pylon a little sooner than that. So spawning pool not being built. So it doesn't look like we're going to be seeing speed zerglings into the initial. Let's see if we're seeing a second hatchery. It looks like a drone out here. Yeah, to place that second hatchery. But uh, just against this 12 gate, that that could be very difficult. He's going to have to produce a lot of Zerglings to defend and he could very well end up losing that secondary and it's just going to be four Zerglings to start. Yeah, he just needs to pump Zerglings, Zerglings, Zerglings from this stage on. Maybe he thought it was just going to be one gate tech. Single Zealot there to block that uh, front door gap um, knowing that that 12th pool's on the way. But uh, yeah, there's the, the rest of the Zerglings being produced and finally that gas being placed. Speed is just going to be critical here because look at this. Like If you get speed Zerglings back here, they can wander around and just do all sorts of, of damage, all sorts of havoc. Two more results being produced alongside, but uh, honestly, with the Zealots, um, if they uh, manage to kind of push the gap, they could do a lot of damage. It looks like the Zerglings is now going off to that probe instead of kind of running towards that gap. They will have this target of opportunity, this hatchery. They should move sooner rather than later, though. Um, surprised that first Zealot's not already kind of up in the mix to try to attach, uh, attack that secondary. The thing is, is opening with two gate, you really need to be aggressive with it. You can't just uh, stay back with your zealot force, and it looks like the zealots are in fact holding up. But wow, against, I've never seen this before, against a two gate opening going for three hatcheries, but this still might pay off because the zealots are just holding back. Second hatchery is going to be online momentarily. Overlord is seeing all this too. It's seeing all these zealots uh, starting to wander up, and it looks like it's going to be five zealots and a couple probes uh, in a all-out run-in attack, and this could be very successful because uh, that's a the, first of all only six zerglings on the ground to try to defend against this. Uh, it looks like more zerglings being produced, a creep colony being produced at the secondary, but uh, this is a hatchery that's going to be completely exposed, and that's four that's 300 minerals that is not zerglings, and a lot of uh, I don't see enough zerglings on the ground yet. So uh, if this hatchery isn't canceled, that's certainly going to go down, and I don't know that the secondary is going to be defended uh, enough in time, and it's just going to be so many zealots flooding over, just zealots are so much stronger than zerglings. Now pounding in the secondary, it is cancelled, drone gets killed there, but can just waltz in and only a single creek colony and not a lot of zerglings to try to defend this. That probe scout still alive, and it looks like he's going to hold up, wait for those two additional zealots to come in, um, really, but with those probes running in to take the initial damage. Oh, running out and attacking with the zerglings, able to, to pick off one probe, and now transferring some units. Now the zealots starting to run in, some reinforcements coming alongside. He doesn't need to go the long way around. It looks like they are holding up, and that uh, could be uh, devastating. It looks like that creep colony is going to get 
or sorry, that Sun Colony is going to get wiped out. The Zerg is trying to run in, get a good surround. Um, but And the Zealots running away, surprisingly. I thought uh, just playing heads up, they would be okay. N two more Zealots now swinging around. They are getting separated, which is critical. You want a nice wall of Zealots to go up against this many Zerglings. But now, yeah, there's more Zerglings than Zealots um, to really uh, counter this. That, that second hatchery was up, and it looks like that, uh, that he was able to produce just a lot of Zerglings to kind of counter this. So Spencer's going to have to back off. And now he's in a lot of trouble, a lot of trouble. Uh, I don't see Zergling speed being upgraded. Looks like there's only a single drone on gas, but he's completely outnumbered by Zerglings. Looks like he's got a zealot to kind of block that gap. He's uh, economically behind, and he had to do some sort of damage with this. You can't go for a two-gate opening and not inflict some sort of casualties. Otherwise, you just uh, end up so far behind uh, in the early game. Looks like that third hatchery going down at the gap. No tech to spire. Okay, now there's three... Tech to Spire, Tech to Lair, which I assume is going to be followed up by a Spire. Um, Sutton Colony, a lot of Zerglings on the front door. And now, yeah, the Zealots have to continue to try to force those larvae to be uh, Zerglings rather than drones. But already pretty good drone saturation on the secondary and also um, on the main, it looks like. A big attack on their front door. That's going to clean out a lot of those Zerglings. And these Zealots should be able to actually uh, take care of the Sutton Colony and do some damage on the main. More Zerglings being produced. Second Creep Colony going down. That's not going to be up in time. Uh, so now Spencer are going to be able to inflict some damage. You should be able to take out that Second Creep Colony without a lot of trouble. Zerglings being built out of uh, necessity and emergency and uh, he's going to be able to get a lot of drone kills with this and maybe even take out the second base so uh, yeah there goes and more zealots running in again I'm surprised by the play here First of all, that more Zerglings weren't produced, more Creep Colonies weren't produced, even uh, across that uh, that initial stop. But now, yeah, going to pay for it because he's going to lose all these hatcheries. Zerglings running up in the background. Hydralisks then being plopped down. That's exactly what you don't want at this stage versus these Zealots. The Mulisks would help, but Hydralisks on the ground really won't. Um, going after the spawning pools, and that's the kind of Zealot wall you want against those Zerglings where they can't really get a good surround. Uh, so they're just dying piecemeal one by one getting picked off. The drone's coming off the line to try to assault this, but the Zealot's just too powerful. They should be able to stand up uh, right this, and this is uh, more of the economy that is just uh, starting to melt here. Um, a lot of Zealot's actually getting taken out, and I'm, there's not any... Okay, now the Zealot's continuing up the field. I expected more Zealot's kind of in the mix here um, as a group rather than kind of spread out. Looks like they're going to chill towards the secondary. Starting to wail against that spawning pool now. Zergling's running up. They know they need to save that spawning pool first, uh, and let's see if Spencer decides to gather those Zealot's up, so um, not gathering up just yet. Able to kill a lot of drones, inflict a lot of damage, and get a lot of those uh, links killed, so he's definitely able to even things up economically. But uh, being a little bit greedy now, and running up his zealots, uh, not really in a uniform group. Um, and again, zealots separated, or you gotta be, you have to fight for ire, you fight alongside your brethren. Come on. Um, that's what you want. The three zealots together, or the four zealots together. A lot of zerglings being produced. And I still don't think this game is over, because keep in mind, uh, again, without that forge, without that cannon in the back edge, which I'm not seeing, so still no forge. Forge, still no cannon. The Zerglings, there is a forge up actually, so it looks like a Citadel of Dune as well. Um, those Zerglings could still do a run by and still get some economic damage done after they clean up these Zealots, which it looks like they're going to be able to because um, that's a lot of Zerglings. And again, I expect to see a direct counterattack simply because uh, why not? Uh, Dish could just run those Zerglings in. Um, I mean, he's already lost a lot of his economy. It, it just makes sense to go in for an attack. Um, and that front door, it's, it's mostly exposed. And going for a third base, getting really greedy here. Uh, so Spencer now being the one who's being a little bit over op uh, a little bit over optimistic here, overly optimistic. That's the word I'm looking for. The Zerglings starting to run out. There's still a lot of Zealots on the gap. You, they might have to worry about though. And more Zerg Zerglings being produced. And here comes that counterattack. Uh, will there be a cannon? That, okay, there's a cannon morphing in at the secondary. The Zerglings should be on top of that before uh, the, it uh, warps in. There is the Templar archives. Dark Templar in the mix could definitely help out. And the Zealots need to return to home base uh, to really help defend here. It looks like that cannon is going to get knocked down. Second cannon trying to go up. That's going to get knocked down as well. And now it's the Zergling's turn. They just need to... They're a little bit more um, micro-intensive though than the Zealots. The Zealots you can just leave there. Looks like one Zealot getting taken out. The secondary being raked over all the probes getting killed right there. Let's see if they can take out an Nexus or maybe even run around to the main. But uh, the rest of the Zelts kind of committing in, running in. They're getting killed uh, fairly easily because they're getting separated. Now it's all in Zerglings running in. Now King in realizing, oh, wait, hey, wait a minute. He doesn't have any cannons defending that secondary, and he doesn't have enough Zelts to really defend anymore because he just kind of sent them in uh, at a bad situation. Probes coming off the line to try to defend, but I don't think it's going to be enough. Dish continuing to assail the secondary. Probes trying to help uh, in the defense. Probes are actually pretty good units to attack Zerglings with, but but uh, they're getting killed. The secondary completely empty. The main uh, completely dry. And it looks like Dish is going to have a great turnaround and beat Spencer to have Princeton University advance. 
hope you guys enjoyed that. So Princeton University advances. Harvard gets knocked out. Bitter rivals directly to the end. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. Cholera, again, going to be doing the live cast on this the May 9th at 9.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you for listening.